Welcome to Zigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for agricultural science. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I will want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. The exam guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, post-UTME, WIEC, GCE, KCPE, IGMB, JPED, Cowbell Pedia, BECE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, to mention a few. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to be updated on new videos. Ready for today's class? Okay, let's get started. 70% of the earth is covered by water. This leaves only 30% as land. A lot of activities, that is agricultural and non-agricultural, are done on land. Now in this lesson, we will look at land and its uses. So our topic for today is land and its uses. By the end of this lesson, we should be able to state the meaning of land, should also be able to pinpoint the characteristics of land, and finally, you should be able to highlight the agricultural and non-agricultural uses of land. So let's take a look at the meaning of land. Now, from the agricultural point of view, land is defined as a solid part or uppermost part of the Earth's surface on which agricultural activities take place. So let's take a look at the characteristics of land. What are the characteristics of land? One, land is a free gift of nature. It's a free gift of nature. It is geographically immobile. That means you cannot move land from one location to another. So land is geographically immobile. Now land is also limited in supply. Remember what I said, I said earlier on, about 70% of the earth is covered with water and 30% land. So it's actually limited in supply and land has been used up also as the population grows, the available land is also used up. So land is limited in supply. And it also consists of vegetation, minerals, soil, and water. So when we're talking about land, we should have it in mind that it consists of vegetation, which has to do with plants, minerals, soil, and water. Now, land can also appreciate or depreciate in value. Appreciate, of course, means it can be of good value or depreciate means we can lose its value. So land appreciates its value, especially if it is fertile and the topography is good. That means the value or the worth of the land will be high. But if it's infertile, especially when we're talking about based on agricultural purposes or the topography is bad, the value of such land will be depreciated. So another characteristic of land is that land can appreciate or depreciate in value. Now, land is also abundant in some areas and scarce in some areas. Some areas have enough land, while some terrains or areas have more of aquatic, um, that's more of water, the riverine areas, you know. So, but another characteristic, as I said here, is that land is abundant in some areas and scarce in other areas. Still also looking at it in terms of population, as another factor too, to determine its level of abundance as well. Now, its quality differs from one place to another. Depending on the topography, if it has a good topography, of course, the quality, remember this is still connected to appreciation and depreciation. Also the texture, the soil fertility, also are factors that determine the quality of land in a particular location. So its quality differs from one place to another based on these factors, topography, soil, texture, which is the, the 
fill of the soil, then the fertility, that's the nutrient um, content of the soil as well. Now, it can also be used as collateral for loan because land is an asset. So it's what can be used in exchange. That's a collateral is what you give in exchange for monetary um, aid. So it can be used as a collateral to obtain financial assistance or help from financial institutions. Its value is also determined by its location. So if land is located in a developed area, of course, the value for such land will be high, you know, because there will be a lot of population pressure also. People place a lot of demand to obtain land. But if it's located in an undeveloped area, or rural area with probably low population pressure, you will find that the value of the land will be low. So its value is determined by its location. The reward for land is rent. That's another characteristics of land. So if you could, you give out your land, either you sell it, but based on this factor we're looking at, if you hire out, maybe you lease out your land, you know, you rent it out, the reward gotten is for land is what? Rent. Let's take a look at the uses of land. How is land used? And before we do that, we're going to look at the land use policy. And what does this entail? The land use demands careful planning in order to ensure that there's increased agricultural production. I said land use demands careful planning in order to what? Ensure that there's increased agricultural production production because without land you cannot engage in agricultural production now in order to use our land more efficiently there has to be or we need the government needs to ensure that there's a continuous land use policy which shouldn't change from one government to the other so this land use policies ensures that land is the acquisition and the management of land is achieved with less difficulty. So in order to ensure this, the government should make sure that these policies that are put in place to ensure that land is more efficiently used should not be changed as the government changes. Now there's a lot of demand on land for agriculture, forestry, wildlife conservation, industry, housing, recreation, etc. to mention, including transport too. All of this place a lot of demand on land. So it's good for the government it's important for the government to ensure that an efficient land use policy is set in place. Now, however, agriculture and forestry and wildlife place the most demand or make the most or the greatest demand for land. So now let's take a look at Nigeria now. You can see that in Nigeria, about 98.3, it has a total land area of about 98.39 million hectares. And out of this land area, about 71.2 million hectares are cultivable. So that's a big plus for the Nigerian, um, um, Nigeria as a country, for us to have this amount of cultivable hectares. Out of the total land area of 98.39 million hectares, we have about 71.2 million hectares that are cultivable. So we should be able to feed ourselves adequately. Now, let's take a look at the classification of land based on use. There are two major classifications of land. Here we have the agricultural land and the non-agricultural land, or the agricultural uses of land and the non-agricultural uses of land. So let's look at the agricultural uses of land. So land can be used for crop production. Basically, you not grow crops on trees or in the air. Crops are grown on land. So land is used for crop production. Let's look at the importance of crop production. Why is it important? It helps to provide us with food, employment, income for the farmers, raw materials also provided for industries as a result of crop production. It also ensures or aids the development of towns. And this is achievable, especially where commercial agriculture is practiced. And also, foreign exchange is earned when we deal with cash crops, which can be exported to other nations. So you can see how important crop production is. 
Another agricultural use of land is that land can be used for livestock production because we're looking at pasture for grazing as land. Pasture is land for grazing cattle, sheep, goats. Pasture is also referred to as land in agricultural terms too. So it can be used for grazing cattle, sheep, and goats. And let's look at the importance of livestock production. It can be a source of protein, source of employment, especially when we look at cattle rarers, poultry farmers, pig farmers, you know, rabbit farmers, etc. Then it can also provide feed for farm animals. You know, it provides feed for farm animals. It also provides raw materials for industry. Provides raw materials for industries like the hides and skin. You may be wondering, let me go back to the feeds for animals, farm animals, through livestock um, um, production. When we talk about fish meal, which is, um, well, fish production is still can fall under animal production, I say. You know, when the oil is extracted, what is left can be used to formulate um, feeds for animals. Even the blood gotten from animals can be used to make what is called blood meal. So you can see how livestock production can also be a source of feed for farm animals. Now let's continue from where we stopped. We said it also provides raw materials from for industries, for example, hides and skins, which can be used to make drums or musical instruments like drums, you know, the local drums. Then it can also make um, our belts or shoes or um, jackets. They're also gotten from hides and skins. And also, livestock can also be a means of foreign and um, generating foreign exchange when some of the products are sold or exported in other nations. For example, meal can be exported, chicken can be exported to other nations too, and foreign exchange can be earned. So that, these are some of the importance of livestock production. So still looking at agricultural uses of land. Now we have land can be used for fishery, that has to do with the production of fish, or rearing management and production of fish. And in this case, let's look at the importance of fish farming. Fish farming is a source or a good source of food for man and livestock. Talking about the fish, it can be used to feed our animals or to make feed for our animals or to meet the protein requirements even for our animals as well. Then it can also provide a means of recycling waste. For example, the animal dung gotten from farms, also some factory waste and can also be recycled how because fish can consume such waste as well the fish can also be processed into byproducts such as the fish meal the fish oil and the fish skin because the skin gotten from fish is called chagrin so take note of that the skin gotten from fish especially cartilaginous fish which can be used to make some wares that we wear jackets shoes as well the skin is tough. Cartilaginous um, fishes have tough skin, so like the shark, they can it can be used as to make some of those um, items. And the skin is called shark green. Now it provides employment and income to many people as well. Fish farmers, fish mongers, people who sell fish, and also it can also ensure a better use of land and water in our environment. Still looking at agricultural uses of land, land can be used for forestry. Now, some forests have been kept by the government for specific purposes. And any such location or such forests that are kept for specific purposes are called forest reserves. And some of the forest reserves that we have in Nigeria or that have been established in Nigeria, I'm going to give you some of them. But the reason why they're established they are usually established where there is low pressure for cultivation or low population density or where the land seems not to be suitable for agriculture. These are the reasons of where forest reserves are located. And we have some of them, just a few. We have some Shasha Forest with um, River Forest in Ogun State. We have Onomo Forest Reserve in Kwara State. We have Okomo Forest Reserve in Edo State. Sakoba Forest Reserve in 
Also in Edo State, we also have Omo Forest Reserve in Ogon State. We have Anara Forest Reserve in Kaduna State, Afi River Forest Reserve in Cross River State, Mamo River Forest Reserve in Anambra State, Zamfara Forest Reserve in Zamfara State, Sanga Forest Reserve in Plateau State, Alba Hills Forest Reserve located in Oyo State. Let's take a look at the importance of forests. Of course, the forests can help or helps to provide wood, which can be used for furniture making. It also helps to provide us with fuel in the form of firewood to cook or prepare our dishes, so to roast our game. Game in this context is wild animals or animals that are caught in the wild, are also referred to as game. So you can use it to prepare to firewood, to prepare some fire to roast game. Now, timber can also be a source of foreign exchange. Timber is gotten from forests as well. Wild animals too can also serve as a good source of meat for man. And these wild animals, as I stated earlier, can be roasted with using firewood, which is a source of fuel gotten also from forests. And also medicinal herbs too. Are, a lot of medicinal herbs are gotten from the forest to help us with our health challenges. It also provides employment for people in areas like the sawmillers, silviculturists, forest guards, etc. Just to mention a few. It also helps to prevent erosion. The forest helps to prevent erosion. The roots of the trees, they help to keep the soil together. You know, so that's a means of preventing erosion. Even wind erosion too. That's erosion caused by wind. The forest serves as wind breakers. They also help to beautify our environment. I'm sure if you, some of us may have traveled to some locations and you see a lot of trees, which are like forests, and it's a beautiful uh, scenario. So forests also help to beautify our environment. They also help to reduce atmospheric pollution because trees, they're, through the process of photosynthesis, or while they are carrying out photosynthesis, make use of carbon dioxide, which is released into the atmosphere. They make use of it, so they help to purify the atmosphere of some harmful gases. And forests also serves as wind breakers too, as I mentioned earlier too. So that's another importance of forests. Still on agricultural uses of land, land can be used for game reserves or wildlife conservation. So what is wildlife? This has to do with animals and birds found in the bush. So wildlife are conserved where? In game reserves. So these wild animals and birds that are found in the bush are conserved in game reserves and lands that are not usually suitable for agriculture and forestry are usually used for game reserves. Now what is a game reserve? A game reserve is a place where wild animals are conserved to avoid extinction while they are carefully and wisely exploited. They will be exploited but carefully and wisely. So game reserves are where wild animals are kept or conserved in order to avoid extinction. And here we're going to look at the term called poaching. What is poaching? This has to do with the indiscriminate killing of animals, wild animals, in a game reserve. And this should be prohibited. Poaching should be prohibited in order to avoid extinction of our wild, some of our wild animals. Also, forest fires and fishing with chemicals should also be avoided in order to preserve wild life. Examples of some game reserves in Nigeria, we have the Yankari Game Reserve, which is located in Bauchi. We have the Bogu Game Reserve, which is located in Niger State, the Kainji National Park, which is located in Kogi State, and we have the Zuguman Game Reserve, which is located in Niger State. So we've dealt with the agricultural uses of land as for agricultural purposes. Now let's look at the non-agricultural uses of land, which is for non-agricultural purposes. Now, land can be used for construction of industries. I said one of the major demands of land is not just only for agricultural purposes, even for industries as well. So land can be used for construction of industries. It can be used for construction of residential buildings for human habitation. 
It can also be used or mining of mineral resources also take place in land. This is done in land. Mineral resources like coal, gold, etc. are gotten from land. It can also be used for construction of sports centers. These sports centers are like stadiums, race courses, the golf courses, to mention a few. So land can is also used for the construction of sports centers. It's also used for recreational purposes. For example, parks where you can go have some fun, you know, for example. So it's used for recreational purposes as well. It can also be used for the construction of markets where buying and selling takes place. So land is also used for the construction of markets. It can also be used for the construction of religious places as a place of worship, either churches, mosques, or shrines. So land can be used for the construction of religious places as well. It can also be used for the construction of transportation networks. For example, our railways, they go on land. Airports are also located on land. Roads for movement of vehicles is also constructed on land as well. Can also be used for the construction of commercial houses like banks and warehouses as well. So land can be used for the construction of such. Let's also take a look at how agricultural land can appreciate in value. Remember, we talked about the characteristics of land. We said it can appreciate and it can also depreciate in value. Let's look at how agricultural land can appreciate in value. One of the ways is by fertilization, addition of fertilizers, manuring as well. Also, reclamation of land, drainage in terms of controlling of waterlogging. Following is also another way by which we can help land to appreciate in value to help regain lost fertility by allowing it to rest for a while while the farmer comes back to cultivate the land after some few years. Then proper cultivation methods like crop rotation also helps to restore fertility to soil. Here is, it has to do with the sequence where salarated crops and deep rooted crops are alternated on different plots. You know, cereals are cultivated, leguminous crops are cultivated to fix nitrogen back into the soil. So this is a means of, you know, helping the land to appreciate in value. Then proper erosion control to prevent the loss of the topsoil. So this is another way by which land, agricultural land can be made to appreciate in value. Irrigation too, artificial application of water to also help land appreciate in value. Rotational grazing as well, where the land is partitioned into paddocks where the animals graze in different portions. These are all means by which land may be able to be made to appreciate in value. Let's look at the factors affecting land availability for agricultural purposes. What are those factors that determine or affect the availability of land? For agricultural purposes. The land tenure system is one of the factors. Now this makes land easily available or not depending on the tenure system, you know, for large-scale farming. Population pressure is another factor that determines land or affects land availability. So the higher the population, the lower the land that is available for agriculture and the lower the population, the higher the land that is available for agriculture. We have topography as another factor affecting land availability. Now, topography has to do with the surface features of a piece of land. Of course, low lands or low-lying lands are usually prone to flooding and waterlogging, and this cannot support a wide range of crops, except a few crops like rice that needs, um, especially swamp rice, that needs such type of terrain. But most crops do not need such for their growth. Then the size of useful land of a country is also another factor that determines the availability of land. Useful land that can be cultivable also determines whether land will be available for agricultural purposes. Then climatic factors, which has to do with temperature, rainfall, etc., can also affect the availability of land. Of course, a wet and rainy condition will favor food crop production, tree crop production, while a dry climate will not really favor crop production, but can favor livestock 
production. Okay. Religious belief is another factor that can affect land availability for agricultural purposes. Some religions like Islam forbid the rain of pigs, and so that's a factor that can affect whether that land can be used to build pens to get involved in pig production. Pig production takes place in houses or pens, which should be located on land. So if that person, farmer wants to get involved with pig farming, he will not be allowed because pig production is a taboo according to the religion of Islam. Social cultural factor is another factor that affects land availability, and this has to do with um, certain lands being preserved for certain cultural activities like location of shrines and symmetries or places of worship too. That's another factor that can determine whether the land will be made available for agricultural purposes or not. Infrastructural demand. Now, of course, um, every society needs to advance in terms of infrastructural um, development. And this also has, has taken a toll on arable land that can be used for agriculture because as these infrastructures are being provided, they are constructed on land. And this land sometimes are valuable land that are, being, that are used by farmers for agriculture. And so these farmers are displaced from their farms because certain infrastructures have to be located on such lands. Industrialization too is also another factor that affects land availability, location of industries, which also places a high demand on land. And these industries are cited in areas that have been good or have been used for agriculture, thereby displacing the farmers as well. Government policy, the land use decree of 1978 also empowers only the state government to own land. So this is another factor that has or does affect land availability. Economic factors. Now, when we're talking about economic factors, we're talking about capital or finance. And now, once there's enough capital, this can help promote agricultural activities, thereby placing a demand for farmers to go try to obtain enough land or large areas of land for cultivation. And once this finance is also inad inadequate, it will discourage large-scale farming or intensive farming as well. Fertility status of the soil or the soil type, sorry, that's soil type, not spoil type, soil type. Now, this can also determine the land that will be available for agriculture. If the soil type is um, fertile, it will encourage crop farming. But if it's not fertile, of course, it will not support crop farming. So certain things like the structure, the texture, the pH value and the nutrients will also determine the type of crops that will be grown in such type of soil. We also have degree, degree of land degradation. Now, certain lands that are prone to erosion will definitely not be suitable for agricultural production. So in this lesson, we looked at the meaning of land, which is the solid part or the uppermost part of the Earth's surface on which agricultural activities take place. We also looked at the characteristics of land, some of which include it being a free gift of nature, it also being geographically immobile, it being limited in supply, to mention a few. We also talked about the use of land. Here we looked at the agricultural use and the non-agricultural uses, but based on agricultural use, we said it could be used for crop production, for livestock and keeping, or livestock production, for forestry, etc. We also looked at the non-agricultural uses and we said this has to do with construction of roads or markets as infrastructure, markets as well, religious centers, mining and for recreational purposes to mention a few. We also said that farmland may appreciate in value through the following ways. That's we looked at the way farmland could be made to appreciate in value, which has to do with fertilization, manuring, reclamation, drainage, following, proper cultivation methods such as crop rotation, to mention a few. Then we also looked at factors which affect land availability for agriculture, which has to do with 
land tenure system, population pressure, soil type, and topography, size of useful land in a country, climatic factors, and really just the leaves to mention a few. So let's take a look at some questions using our exam guide. So starting with 2019, This question says, which of the following statements about land is not correct? A, it's limited, its supply is limited. B, it is used for agricultural production. C, it is subject to depreciation. D, it can be relocated. The answer is D, land cannot be relocated. It's geographically immobile, so it cannot be relocated. Okay. So we're still on 2019. We have number, another question. They said the social cultural factor affecting land availability is A, soil type, B, religion, C, topography, D, mining. The answer is religion, B. This question says that the protective functions of forest include the following, except this has to do with the importance of forest. Now, soil conservation, yes, serving as wind break, yes, purification of air, correct, and then the source of firewood. So the answer is D. We've talked about here, they are asking for protective function not necessarily importance of forest. So the answer here is source of firewood. That's not a protective function. So let's go to 2017. Land use for agriculture in West Africa is influenced by the following factors except okay a population density topography b following c and then d climate the answer is following following is a way of making land appreciative and valuable it's not a factor that influences its use so the answer here is following So let's go to 2016. The most limiting factor affecting land availability for agriculture in urban settlements is A, soil type, B, topography, C, climate, and D, population pressure. That's the most limiting factor. The answer is depopulation. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that make learning fun. It is a must have for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and share the video to people that would benefit from it.